Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to another sketch tutorial. This time we're going to be looking at single sided borders. Uh, we're going to look at a couple of different methods of doing this. Uh, here's a comparison of them side by side. Visually they are identical in the end result, but I'll just take you through the ways that you can set them up and the pros and cons of using each. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing we're going to do, uh, I'm just going to duplicate the existing outlines artboard. Uh, that already gives us a nice template to start from. There we go. And let's just go ahead and look at the first one. And right now we're using the borders uh, style in Sketch. This is great if you have a, a border on every side, but often in certain designs, you, have, you want a border on just one side. And in CSS, this is really simple. But in Sketch, it does make things a little bit more difficult. We can't just use the border style. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. And instead, we're going to be using inner shadows. So let's go ahead and knock this one on. So straight away, what we want to do, let's give this our primary color variable. And you see here, we've got an option for blur. Let's set this to zero. And this will give us nice solid lines as opposed to the blurred lines which you're normally going for in, in a shadow. You can set the distance offset using X and Y. So for example, here I'm gonna go for a top border. So I'm gonna give this a Y of two because I want a two pixel top border. And there we go, it's really that simple. Now one thing you might have noticed, that because I'm using my trackpad to, to zoom in and out, I don't get very even percentages here. Uh, so for example, if I just reset to 100, and I, I zoom in and out using my plus minus, I get more stable numbers like 100%, 50%, 200%, etc. And at those values, the edges look absolutely fine. But if you're using pinch zoom, you sometimes see a little bit of purple or whatever color you've got selected, uh, sort of bleeding in at the edges. And it is a little bit annoying if you're, if you're in sketch and it, it can make things look a bit weird. But if you then export from here, whether whether you export using uh, the export feature here or you export to, for example, InVision, uh, those lines are not visible. So it's only really a problem while you're designing. So if you're able to ignore it, then it works really nicely. Now, in terms of file structure, we've already got a bunch of borders set up. So I'm gonna quickly group those separately so we can separate our standard borders and our single side borders. So I'll just go over to our layer styles tab. Let me just group these. Uh, let's call this standard. Let's call the group itself outlines. Okay, let's head back to where we were. So for this one here, I'm gonna create a layer style. Let's call it outlines, single sided, two pixel great, primary one, 900. And there we go. So if I then go ahead and I want to add a layer style we just created, let's go to this document, outlines, single-sided, single, oh, single spelled wrong, but we can fix that, two pixel primary, and there we are. So that's pretty neat. Now, because we're doing it like this, we can use it in our containers. But we'll have a little look at how we use that later on. So for now, I'm just going to set up all of these with the top outline style and then we'll create three more for the left, uh, the right, and the and the bottom as well. So again, I'm gonna select this one here, get rid of the border, give us a layer style, make sure we get back to primary. Uh, this one's gonna be one pixel, so just the one for the Y offset. And again, blur zero. Let's create this. So single sided, one pixel, 900, great. I'm just going to do the same uh, with all of these. Okay, now we've set those up for the border at the top. I'm just going to make sure they're grouped so they are grouped uh, at the top. So just here, uh, actually, I'm just going to just group that one. Might be easier. Let's call the group itself single sided, and then let's call this top. And now we have everything nicely arranged and we'll do the same with uh, right bottom and left as well. 
So let's head back to our core styles. Let's give ourselves a bit of room. I'm going to rename this one so we know what we've got here. So it's a single sided top. And let's say this one's going to be single sided right. Okay, now to change this from the top to the right, we're going to go over to our inner shadows here. We're going to set the Y offset to zero and the X offset to minus two. And there we go, our, our border appears on the right like that. And I'm going to create a new style for this. Uh, let's change top to right. And there we go. I'm basically going to do the same for right, for bottom and for left. Okay, that's done for the right side. Two more left to go. Do the bottom and do the, the bottom border set X offset to zero and Y offset this time will be negative. And there you go. We've got our bottom border. So now I'm just going to do these and create the layer styles for them. Okay, cool. And finally, we'll do the left side. So let's rename this to left. And let's have a look at how we can create that. So this time we'll change the Y offset to zero and the X offset will be two or whatever value you want. And there we go, we've got our left border. So I'm gonna go through and create all of these. Okay, there we go. And now we've set up the layer styles uh, for each of the sides. We've got top, right, bottom, and left right there. So we just grab a, put in a rectangle, for example. Uh, let's go to our outline, single-sided. We've got the choice of all the sides. Let's say I'm going to go for a bottom, two pixel, dark. And there it is, like I said. So we just flip over to our symbols page. We've got our sign-up form. And what I'd like to do is just create a bit of a separator between the top section and the rest of the form. And I'd like to do that by adding a little border underneath sign up. So first of all, I'm just gonna put in a rectangle and make sure it's just about underneath the sign up here. Put it the whole way across. And let's pull the rest of the elements of the form down give ourselves some room okay and I'm just going to create a little group here as if they were sort of an independent div and now let's add the layer style that we've just set up let's go to layer styles outlines single-sided I'm going to give the bottom one and let's go with a one pixel dark let's just go with the light version so it's very subtle and there we are so this is one way of doing it you could also do it in a slightly different way uh, using the container elements that we've already set up so if i just grab a container element just grab the background one here that i already had um, i'm just going to add that in where we had our rectangle and get rid of that one let's just call it container and I'm going to change it to square radius so that we get we don't get a cut off at the edge for the radius. And where we've got our outline, we can go in here, we can go in and pick out our layer style right here. So dark, let's go to the light version. And again, there it is. So we can make use of it independently as a layer style or inside of the containers that we've already set up. So that's one way of doing it. Now I'm going to show you another way of doing it by creating a new set of container symbols. So let's head back over to our core styles page. Let's get rid of that one. I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate our containers artboard that we created earlier. And I'm just going to get rid of all of them apart from the square radius one. So let's detach this symbol. I'm going to straight away, I'm going to get rid of the existing outline. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the existing fill and resize that 
to whatever size border we want. In this instance, let's go with two pixels. So that's there. Let's just set the fill to a light background so we can see the border. Uh, let's go with just light base. Okay, now we can see our primary border at the top here. Let's make sure we pin this to the top left and right and fix the height so that will always stay at the top. And then we can go ahead and create a symbol from this and call it containers. Uh, let's just say border top two pixels. Now because this is using layer styles for the fill of the border, uh, we can change those to whatever we like. So oh, let me just change the name so we can we know which layer is which. So I'm going to call the fill, let's just call that border. And let's go back. Now we can see this one right here. So I can go ahead and change this to whatever I want. Change the error, make it the light color if we want. That's just an example. But we have access to those right there. So let's go ahead and make versions of these for border top, right, bottom, and left, and, and for two pixel and one pixel for each. And to do this, I'm just going to head to the symbols page and start doing it there. So let's duplicate this one, call it border right, go in and resize our existing border. There we go. I'm going to change the constraints so it's constrained in its fixed width and it's pinned to the top right and bottom. So there we go. Let's do the same for border bottom. Change the constraints again. Again, constrain the height this time. Make sure it's left, bottom, and right. And then the left side. Change the constraints once again. Fix width and left, top, and bottom pinning. Okay, now I'm just going to duplicate these for the one pixel versions. So straight away, let's rename these before we forget. And I'm going to resize the borders to one pixel. And there we go. So if you want to take a look at this in action, um, similarly to the first version using the inner shadow, let's just head over within our symbols page to the sign up form. I'm just going to duplicate this so we can compare them side by side. Let's just call that sign up two. And instead of this container, which you've got here, I'm going to sub this in, head back to our containers here, sub this in for a border bottom one pixel right here. And let's just reset our override. So we've got the default one that we set up. Okay. And I'm going to get rid of the shadow straight away. And right now, obviously, we've got a primary border here. So I'm going to go ahead and change that. Let's make it the same. So go dark and 400. And there we are. There's two ways of achieving exactly the same thing. And one of the advantages of the container is that you don't get those those edge bleeds that you do get with the inner shadows. But I do quite like the way that using the inner shadows, you can just use the existing symbols that you had set up and just replace uh, the outline override. So two options there. Pick whichever one works best for you. And I'll see you in the next tutorial.